Now, when Felicity Hayward became a model in the UK, she was determined to pave the way for more diversity in fashion. From featuring in Vogue and Glamour magazine to putting pen to paper, Felicity joins us now on the line to tell us about her new book. Felicity, a very good morning and you're so welcome. Growing up was being a model what you always want to be. You, you hear it all the time, young girls say, I want to see my na name up in lights. Was that what you wanted to do? Absolutely not. I never thought being a model would be an opportunity because of my size and there was no representation when I grew up. So the thought that never even, you know, came into my into my brain. So when, when did you decide that you were going to be a campaigner for body positivity, something that's so important, particularly for young people who are trying to identify with somebody and, you know, there's pressure on image and and it's, it's, it's a tough thing when people are, are going through puberty. When did you decide that this was something you felt very passionate about? So I was actually scouted in an East London pub, dancing to Diana Ross, and got asked to do a shoot as the late, great Anna Nicole Smith. And I just thought she was incredible. She was mm. this amazing early woman um, with amazing style. And I did the shoot, and it was with a photographer called Mars Aldridge. And at that time, in the industry, like curvy women were not used. They were in America, but they definitely weren't over in England. And um, when the shoot came out, it went viral. And I then got scouted from an agency to become a model and became the first UK's plus size model of my age. So it's not something that just, it kind of just ironically landed on my lap. Um, and at the beginning, I knew I was a complete gimmick people were always just wanting to shoot me nude. They were never wanting to, because there wasn't clothes to fit me. Mm. This is 2011, 2012, when the high street just didn't have, you know, cool, young, trendy, plus size clothing. It was only ever a select amount of shops and it was an older range. So you mentioned there in, you are the gimmick and you, you said that in your book that brands used you as a gimmick to just say, oh, look, we're, diver we're diverse, but didn't actually have clothes to fit you. I mean, how, how was that, trying to promote a fashion brand when they don't even have clothes to fit you? How does that well, work? It was, it was more the sort of the editorial side of things. So the, all of the, you know, um, the fashion magazines when you were doing editorial. So mm. editorial is when you shoot for those sort of magazines and commercial is when you shoot with brands. So the editorial side, they would they just couldn't find any like high-end designer stuff for me. So it would be stuff where they would use um, a designer bed sheet once where they wrapped it around my body, which was <sighs> amazing. Um, and yeah, there was... <laughs> so much manipulation with clothing that must um, be that must have been very i suppose disheartening when you arrive to a shoot and the team is assembled and then you're told actually we have no clothes for you but here's a blanket that that must have been very very tough to to get over and then smile for a camera and perform the thing is though it was it's difficult because on one hand i'm like this is really wrong like there really should be clothes in my size but then on the other hand if i don't do this this job mm. and I don't show representation within an industry that has never shown love for bodies like mine, then how are we going to progress? Yeah. So I kind of was just sort of, I'm going to keep doing this, seeing what doors can be opened, hoping to, you know, 10 years later where we are now, where plus size clothing is much more accessible than it was 10 years ago. So your new book is called Does My does my butt look big in this? A body positive manifesto. I mean, why did you feel? Do, do you see that there's a lot of people who probably talk to you about, you know, body positivity, and this is a real message you're trying to promote? Yeah, I just think that if you look at the time frame, especially of women's bodies, in the last hundred years, we are put under so much scrutiny. It's actually crazy mm. when you look at the 1920s when women were given tapeworms to lose weight to the 40s when we were told to smoke cigarettes to stop our appetite to the 50s when we were told to put on weight and had weight gaining pills to look like the hollywood starlets you go to the 60s when twiggy was the poster girl of the generation and everything was very very thin and slim again and you go to the 80s when it was the supermodels and the 90s when the term heroin chic 
was a thing. Like the term of actually looking like you are on a class A drug mm. was fashionable. And then you go to now where being curvy is now considered, you know, most desirable. So you've got a history of all of these body trends which should be abolished. So the reason why writing the book was to make sure, you know, a lot of people don't understand the things that have happened in the last hundred years and also things in the fashion industry that people are just not willing to open up and speak about, but I am. You did boycott London Fashion Week in 2019 and that was an amazing stand to take. Do you think things have actually changed or is it something you're going to be plugging away at for a long time and hopefully other people will join? Because as we know, the average dress size is not eight and it's not 10. It's more like 14 to 16, isn't it? 16. Um, I just got to the stage where, again, it was like there was no plus size representation at, at Fashion Week, at London Fashion Week. And I'd attend the shows and I'd go to the events but then the designers didn't have anything to dress me when they're dressing the rest of the front row. They were giving me an earring. And it just got to the point where I was like, why am I here? Like, I'm representing your brands, but if you don't cater to me or my sizes, like, what, what is the point? So there has been some change since then. Obviously, we've had a pandemic, so the fashion week's very different. But um, New York are absolutely smashing it. And even in Paris and Milan, we're seeing some, you know, plus size girls on Versace and Chanel. Like, we don't seem to be making those waves over here in London, which is pretty embarrassing. Uh, you, you've been pretty vocal and, and critical of trolls, which I suppose you've, you've seen a lot of, of people messed you saying that you're promoting obesity. Uh, but. There is definitely a problem, certainly here in Ireland, they say that 60% of the Irish population are seen to be overweight. And with the, the likes of, of medical issues that come down the line from that, is that a worry to be, say, promoting obesity, say, like the trolls you say are, are, are messaging, messaging you about? I think the thing is, what I promote is a healthy mindset and self-love within yourself. So if somebody is overweight and it is become a medical problem they're never going to make a change unless they learn to love and accept themselves for who they are so people that tell me that i'm promoting obesity i'm not i'm promoting self-love i'm promoting confidence within yourself if you have someone that's you know bullying tactics has never helped anybody you know trying to force someone to change via trolling is never going to work mm -hmm. you know i'm about learning to accept yourself for who you are right now and then if you want to make the change, you but, can. But when we see the, the rise in those obesity levels across the world and with the healthcare systems continue being under pressure, yes, it is okay to love yourself, but at the same time, is that not something that needs to change as well? I mean, I don't. I think it's the, the food industry that we need to be thinking about, not people who are yeah. trying to others feel comfortable within themselves because you know when you look at the pricing of food for example you know if you have a a, a low-income family that's trying to feed their children and you can get processed really terrible food for a lot cheaper than you can for fresh, fresh produce then the chances are you're going to have health issues within that family because of the food industry i don't think it's anything to do with someone like myself who is trying to encourage people to you know look at themselves and like take care of themselves and the re reason i say that is because when you are poorly you know and in any shape or form whether in hospital or you know you have the flu you look at your body and you pray to it to um to get better yeah you drink water nutrients you're like please 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 can i can i become better but then when you are healthy and you're feeling okay you're so awful to your body you're like i can't believe i can't fit into this thing this jeans or you know i don't like my stretch marks i don't like this and i'm trying to teach a, a balance a healthy balance between the both of like you need to appreciate yourself the whole time yeah absolutely. felicity can i ask you because we're coming to the end of our chat for somebody sitting at home on the couch today who's not loving themselves and who isn't feeling great about themselves and feels like they can't find anything to fit and they're just not feeling great, what's the message, a simple message you can give to them today to help them to face the day with a better mindset and love who they are? I think you have to understand that there are no two humans on the planet that are the same. So you have to aspire to be the best version of yourself and not someone else. 
Oh, well brilliant. said. Love it, love it. Listen, Felicity Hayward, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, your new book, Does My Butt Look Big In This? A Body Positive Manifesto is available in stores now. Thank you so much for chatting to us this morning. Thanks, Felicity.